The 2024.3 release of Home Assistant is going to make any script using fields more useful. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through using fields and how to refactor existing scripts to take advantage of this feature so your smart home will be ready. Don't worry, it's going to be easy and will definitely help you automate the boring stuff. The feature in the 2024.3 release I'm referring to is part of the overhaul to the Home Assistant UI, and it's going to let you add a widget, for the lack of a better word, right on your smart home dashboard that allows you to interact with a script live. This means you could have a little place to quickly add items to a grocery list or a to-do list, or even a quick capture window for text you wanted to broadcast to your house. The possibilities here are endless, but to make this work, you need to have a script that is set up to use fields. To follow along with most of this video, you're going to need an account with advanced mode turned on. To do this, head to your user icon in the lower left. Scroll down and turn on advanced mode. This will give you access to the developer tools, which we will be using a bit later. Knowing how to access your YAML configuration files will be helpful as well if you want to use your own scripts when we get to the updating existing scripts section. But it is only needed if your scripts are stored in a file other than the main scripts.yaml, which can be edited via the UI. Okay, let's get on with it. Hello, my name is Jeff. You may remember me from such videos as one script to rule them all and simplify text notifications in Home Assistant. In both of these videos, I talked about how to leverage parameters in your scripts. Parameters, or fields as they're known now, allow you to pass data to a script. That data can then be used as context in that script. You can simply transform it and pass it along to another service, as in taking something like milk and then passing it to your grocery list. Or perhaps you pass it a name and a message and then use it to determine what text notification service you call. So you can build a single text notification service that makes sending text notification messages to users much simpler than having to remember all of the services. This functionality has been around for a long time, but the concept of fields is relatively new. Fields allow you to define these parameters the script can use. This allows Home Assistant to ensure the data passed is in the correct format, and it makes sure that it's easier to use the fields when automating because the UI editor will provide prompts when you select that script as part of your actions. And now in 2024.3, these fields will allow you to show these options right on your dashboard so you can interact with these scripts live instead of having to manually call them or build an automation. So let's walk through building a script with fields. For this, I'm going to use the script UI editor, which you can find by going to settings, automations and scenes, and then clicking Scripts at the top. Then click New Script in the bottom right. For this example, let's build a simple script that will add an item to a to-do list. Perhaps not the best example since there already is a service that does exactly this, but the focus here is using fields. So I'm going to call this script Add To Do, and I'm going to set an icon to a checkbox. We will leave the mode single, which if you're going to use fields with the new UI feature is probably the best choice. Single simply means the script will only run once. And if you try to run it again while it's already running, Home Assistant will simply ignore that call. Then once it's no longer running, you can call it again. To add fields, we need to go to these three dots in the upper right. Here, you'll find the option to add fields. This will give us a field section in our editor. For this field, I'm going to name it item. I'll leave the field variable key name the same. This variable key name is how we will refer to this field in our actions. So it's different than name. Under selector, we can leave it as text. There are other options here in case you need this value to be something different for your use case. The selector tells Home Assistant what type of value it should be. So in this case, with text as our selector, if we pass it a number, Home Assistant will make sure that number is represented as a string when it's passed to our actions. So the selector should be tied to whatever type that value needs to be for the action you're using. And I'm going to turn on required for this one, since without this value, the script shouldn't run. 
And in fact, it would cause an error if you tried to run this script with item blank since we set it to required. If you want to set a default value, you could put that in the default field. This default value would be used as the value of item if nothing is passed to our script when our script is called. And if you need to add more fields, just click the Add Field button. Now that we have our field, let's set up the actions under Sequence. Here I'll click Add Action and choose Call Service. I'm going to choose the to do list Add To Do Service. Then under Entities, I will choose the HA Tasks list for this demo. Then under Item Name, I will put a template to represent my field. In this case, curly brace, curly brace, space, item, and then I'll close that double curly brace. As soon as we start to add a template, the UI is going to tell us we need to do this part in YAML mode. Just make sure your template is wrapped in double quotes. Now we can save this script, and we're ready to use fields. Let's jump over to the services under the Developer Tools and test our script. Head to Developer Tools in the left menu. Then click Services along the top. Now we can choose our Add To Do script we created. And you can see that it prompts us for our item. To show you the current state of my HA Tasks list, I'll jump into the To Do list and choose the HA Tasks list. As you can see, it's currently zero. So we'll jump back to our developer tools, and in the item box, I'm going to type update to 2024.3, and then click call service. If all goes well, we'll get this empty response window. Now we can flip back to the HA task list and see that our new item has been added. And really, it's that simple to get started building your own smart home functions. But what if, like me, you already have tons of these scripts laying around your smart home that don't have fields defined? For this, I'm going to use my text notification script, which you may have seen before. This script allows me to call one script and pass it a name, a title, and a message. And based on the name, the script calls the notification service for the specific person I've indicated. I'll put a link to where it is in my GitHub repo for any of those that want to rub their cursor on it. Now, honestly, this is more a benefit for those of us that still write a lot of automations via YAML because I find it way easier to remember script.text underscore notify instead of, say, notify.mobile underscore app dot insert one of nine different devices each time I want to automate a notification. And the UI editor gives you a nice search function when choosing a service, which means it's easier to find all of those random notification services. But in any case, this script doesn't have its fields defined, so let's add them. It doesn't really matter where you add the field section, but it should be outside the sequence section. I'm going to add it at the top. Since we're editing YAML, we'll need to make sure that we indent a couple of spaces and then add the field's heading. Then under that, we can add the section for each field. I have three, so I've added one for who, title, and message. Who and message I left as required. Title I set required to false. And the indention does matter, so pay close attention when adding these. And if you need a reference, the HA docs provide one. But after you add your field section, you can save your changes. And just to show it works, now if I go to services and choose my text notify script, it will prompt me for the fields, which will definitely make things easier. These fields are one of the most underrated features of Home Assistant. And if you want to know how to do some more advanced stuff, check out this video right here where I talk about how to take those fields, pass them to a script, and get data back, which is where you can really start automating the boring stuff. Mm -hmm.